quiet, please. Quiet, please. Which is written and directed by Willis Cooper. And which features Ernest Chappell. Quiet, please, for tonight is called 3,000 Words. What did you do if you heard a knock on your door some cold winter night? You went to the door and opened it. There was a fellow about three feet high standing on your front porch in the snow. Jump about ten feet in the air and yell? Sure, probably. Only Hubert didn't jump. He couldn't. I was as surprised as he was. I saw my brother sitting there in a wheelchair. He saw a dwarf covered with snow looking as if he'd stepped out of a Walt Disney cartoon. And then Virginia come running from the back of the house, and she recognized me right away. Mom, where'd you come from? Hiya, Virginia. Hubert, what's with this wheelchair? What are you doing? Hold it, Virginia. Hubert. Come in, Monk, come in. Why, thanks, friend. <laughs> what's with you, Hubert? What's the wheelchair for? Uh, you, you sick? He's been in that chair four years, Monk. Oh, Hubert, what... Well, but what's the matter, gee? I... I fell off a train platform. I can't use my legs. Oh, I didn't know that. What do you want, Monk? Can you? They got your coat, Monk. Yeah, well, thanks, Hubert. Hey, <laughs> I like this place. We like it. Well, sit down. Thanks. Virginia, go make us a drink. <laughs> Swell. I want You heard me, Virginia. Oh... Still don't like me, does she? How'd you find this? Huh? Oh, I had run across an item in the billboard a couple weeks ago. Says you were in business here. So I was in Cleveland. I thought I'd run up and take a look at you. Only overnight, you know. What do you want, Monk? You're sure way out in the bondocks, aren't you? We like it. Cost me my last four dollars for a taxi out here. It broke, huh? Flat. Uh, I figured that. How you doing? <laughs> We get by. There's, there's no show business here, is it? We're not in show business anymore. Oh. No. Uh, not much a guy can do in a wheelchair, is there, uh, Hubert? No. Not much. Yeah, it's too bad. The guy my size cheap to get an honest day's work. It looks like you're in the same boat now. I work. Doing what? Junior! What? Have a drink. I'm coming. For heaven's sake, I only got two hands. <laughs> That's what I mean. Uh, Scotch, uh, you must be doing all right, kid. Well, let's go. Yeah, good, good. Yes, sir, you must be doing all right. You're not going to get a cent, Mark. Now, look, honey, I'm Hubert's brother, not yours, and he'll decide, not you, so leave us not be better safe. Sit down, Virginia, and shut up. Am I right, Hubert? I suppose we're stuck with him. You said it. Hubert, I... Next, Virginia. I won't be much trouble, Hubert. Ah, uh, Monk, how about doing a little honest work for a change? Well, uh, uh a little, maybe. Doing what? You're talking about how I used to be good with my hands. And I was better. That's right. Well, I got a certain amount of work to be done, Monk, and I can't do so well since my accident. Are you talking about woodwork? Yeah. So, Virginia, give Monk another drink. I tell you, he I said, it. give him another drink. said, give me another drink, Virginia. A little more scotch and not so much soda this time. <laughs> yes, thank you, dear. Go on, Gilbert. Remember that uh, dummy you made for me in Detroit in Jack Hill shop? Yeah, sure. What are you doing, making dummies for the profession? No, I'm still in the profession. Well, I thought you said you're out of show business. I am. No, I don't get it. Oh, thanks, Virginia. Listen, I was the best ventriloquist in show business. Oh, you were good. But did show business ever give me a break? Did I ever play the palace? Did I ever get on the radio? Did I ever make money? I remember when you got 600 bucks a week. For 11 weeks. That's right, Mark. Yeah, what are you doing here now? Playing club dates or what? I never leave the house. We never leave the house. Hey, what's the gimmick, Hubert? If you take up my proposition... Hubert, you'll be shot. Shut up. Thanks. 
If you take up my proposition, you're not to leave the house either. Well, the uh, river pays off, uh, and if we eat uh, and drink, we will. How much? Twenty a week and found. Twenty. Twenty. Well, uh, we eat good, monk. Have another shot, Virginia, please. You want one, Hubert? Yeah. Well? I don't get it yet. I want you to make me some figures. Figures? Dummies? Well, like dummies. Some of them will be kind of portrait figures. It'll be masks and stuff, too. Got a very nice little shop in back. Look, will you tell a guy what this is all about for the love of... Oh, uh, thanks, Virginia. Why, it's very simple, Monk. I want you to make some ghosts for me. Sure, you figured it out, didn't you? The new angle on the spiritualism racket. We sat there till half past two while he told me about how he worked it. He had a dummy all fixed up in oriental costume, turban and everything. He'd sit in his wheelchair with a very dim little blue light overhead. And Virginia would come in and make like she's hypnotizing him. She wore a black robe, a veil, all that kind of stuff. Then the suckers would ask questions, the dummy on Hubert's knee would answer. Then the suckers would pay my brother perfectly good dough for it <laughs> and come back for more. Yeah, sure, it sounds corny, but you have no idea what suckers they'll go for. And this is a big town, but never mind what town it. So there's thousands of suckers to draw on. Yeah, it's pathetic. But how it pays off. Hide around town. With them tomatoes, I can whip up little Josephine to the life. <laughs> No time at all. And get this. Nobody knows I'm there, see? And the dwarf can move around the darkened room almost as if he's invisible. <laughs> you look in the wrong place, see? Well, it's a riot. It's a gold mine. No check, strictly cash on the line. Hubert stashes it all away in a big old safe. All except what he goes out to Virginia for the house. And my pay. And that ain't so good. What's... Twenty dollars with the hundreds that came rolling in. What's a few dollars a week for grocery money with hundreds of dollars being stuck away in a little old safe? Ah, uh, Virginia. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Monk? I was just thinking. <laughs> Mrs. Kiefer, she was the biggest sucker of them all. She used to come every week, every Thursday, to talk to her dear departed husband, Tom. I got to know Tom pretty well. She'd sit there in the dark blue light and <laughs> ball quietly. Hubert, can't you bring my husband back for me? It is very, very difficult. Oh, Tom. <laughs> Tom. Please, Tom. Tom wishes to speak to you. Tom. Tom Keeper. Tom is here. Oh, oh Tom. Speak to me. I love you, Adeline. I'm very lonely here. Oh, Tom. If I could only see you. I may speak to you only through the medium of this figure, Adeline. <laughs> Be good, Adelaide. Uh, Be good. Be charitable. Uh, Give your money to the deserving. Uh, For in this mysterious land from whose door uh, no traveler returns, uh, we know the worthlessness uh, of earthly wealth. And standing in the other room in my suit of black tights that covered me from head to foot, I whispered to Virginia, he's laying it on thick tonight, ain't he? And before she could reply, I heard my cue. I must return now. And leave this figure through whose lips I speak to you, Adelaide. Oh, Tom, no. No. Good night. Be still, Mrs. Keeper. Perhaps you may feel the hand of the dear departed one upon yours. And I sneaked in. And I touched her arm ever so lightly. She screamed and jumped. She was looking straight in my direction in the dim light. Only she was looking about two feet over my head. She didn't see me at all. <laughs> It's a great racket. A dozen more times like that and $200 bills, sometimes three. 
the other customers with their 20s, their 50s, and a safe in the corner of the room bulging. And 20 a week for me. And house money for Virginia. And me and Virginia and Hubert with the props put away, sitting and having a drink together. And all of us thinking, I'm thinking about the money. Beautiful money in the safe. I'm thinking about the money. The beautiful money in the safe. I'm thinking about the money. The beautiful money in the safe. I don't know what you two are going to do, but I'm going to bed. Good night, Hubert. Good night, Hubert. I was... Wondering something, Virginia. Yeah? I was wondering how long this goes on. What goes on? The hundred dollar bill. You and me on nickels and dimes. Huh. Forever, I guess. You want another drink? I sure do. Yeah, I'm getting a little tired of it. You are? Yep. That chance of doing anything about it with him. You know, Bunk's a ventriloquist, too. What? I... I thought you were in bed, Hubert. <laughs> that was me, Virginia. What? what? Sure, Virginia. I'm a ventriloquist. I'm better than Hubert, even. And he doesn't know it. You're, you're kidding. Yeah. Listen. Sure, you're a ventriloquist, Monk. Monk? <laughs> Why... I could have sworn that was me speaking. I didn't. You see, in a pinch, we could get along without you, but couldn't we? Hundred dollar bill. Sure, if Hubert happened to leave, I could build a dummy of him. We could just change places. The dummy could sit in the wheelchair and hold the ventriloquist on his lap. I'm about the same size as the dummy he's got. Then the oriental clothes would fit me. Who'd know the difference? I can imitate Hubert's voice or anybody's voice. In the dark. Who'd know the difference? The dummy could wear Hubert's clothes. It'd have Hubert's voice. But the dummy wouldn't get the money. We would. We'd know the difference. Oh. That's right. Nobody knows you're here. Nobody ever leaves the house. Nobody'd ever know the difference. And so, you know, I really wasn't surprised three or four days later when Virginia came and told me that Hubert had died. Something he ate seemed to be. Virginia had more stuff in her than I thought she had. It's no cinch digging a hole six feet deep between supper time and breakfast, uh, especially in the rain. Especially when the people digging the hole are not very used to manual labor, a woman and a three-foot dwarf. The rain helped, of course, after we got the grave filled. It made it look as if the place had never been dug up. Very neat. Very handy. I was pretty tired by daylight, but there wasn't much time to rest. I had to get the dummy made. Virginia had to sew Hubert's clothes on it. And we had to go and open the safe with the combination we found in Hubert's desk. Look at the money. We had to look at it pretty often <laughs> and count it. I kept practicing Hubert's voice, too. I, I wanted to be perfect. Listen, Virginia. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. How's that? Oh, it's giving me the creeps. So I'll cut it out. Don't do that. Sound exactly like him. Good. Now, my dear Adelaide, if you could see your way clear to leave an extra thousand dollars or so for a good friend. <laughs> That's perfect. You got him exactly. My baby, I can imitate anybody. Uh, Looks all right, though, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, turn off the main light. Sure. Sure, fine. Let's get the head down a little. <laughs> okay, Hubert. Like this, Mike? That's it, Hubert. <laughs> How's that, Virginia? Uh-huh. How do I look, okay? 
Okay, I... I'm a friend of dummies, neat. Put the arm around me, Virginia. That's it. Oh, oh the, the hand caught my collar. Take it easy. You don't want to choke me. Oh, can't just fix it. Let go of me, Hubert. Yeah, that's better. Hurry up, Virginia. There's somebody coming up the porch. Easy now. Take it easy. Here we go. Come in. Good evening, Hubert. Good evening, Mrs. Kiefer. How am I doing, Virginia? Good evening, Mrs. Kiefer. Hubert says he feels the presence very close. And will you please sit down at once? Oh, oh yes. Yes, of course. I'm so glad. Please sit down quietly, Mrs. Kiefer. The spirits are near. Virginia? I am here, Hubert. Rest and sleep, Hubert. That the spirits may know and come. Rest. The blessed trance of the soul. Sleep. 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 I'm going to have to make this snappy. That hand's digging into my neck again. Sleep. 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 Saturday. Oh. Oh, Tom. Tom, darling. The first time, the second time, the third time. I was terrific. And Tom was under control, too. Tom told Adelaide to give away her money, give to a worthy cause, he said. Well, what cause could be more worthy than the cause of the medium that brought Tom's voice back to her from across the Jordan? <laughs> Why, sure. The third time, she left $1,000 with us in Virginia, and I spent quite a while that night just sitting and looking at the money in the battered old safe. And not remembering the $20 a week and the piddling grocery money that used to be ours. It was that third night that I woke up sometime after midnight. I couldn't resist the temptation to go in and open the safe. Look at the money again. Feast my eyes on it. Feel its crispness in my hand. And I went into the room and there was a little tiny light there. But I couldn't see anything for a minute, so I just waited. I just waited and waited. And then I heard a sound. I didn't recognize it at first, but as my eyes got more used to the dimness, I discovered the door of the safe was open. Somebody else couldn't resist temptation. I flipped down the light. <laughs> well, my dear Virginia. I was just looking... Where's the money? What? Money? Ah, oh, stop that silly talk. So you were going to scram with it, leave me holding the bag, huh? You got away from Good me. Good thing I couldn't sleep. Get away! Too bad, Virginia. I'll put it back. No. What are you... Too bad, baby. I'll break your back. I'm so glad I learned to imitate your voice, Virginia. Go because I didn't me. need Hubert, darling. And I don't need you either. <laughs> good ventriloquist. I am also very strong. Virginia was a big girl, but she fit in the safe quite nicely with the money. And then there was another hole to dig in the garden and not so much time, so I made it only four feet deep. And there I was all alone, me and the money, and nobody knew I was there. They thought Hubert and Virginia were there. And how could anyone know the difference? Mrs. Keefer is on the way over. She's got a lot of money to give away tonight. I might just as well have it. Don't you agree? Well, dummy, let's make it good. Okay, Hubert? We'll make it good, brother. We sure will. And that's all, brother. <laughs> Now, sit still. Let me get set. Hook the arm into the back of my costume. That's good. Yeah, lights are all fixed. Now, 
when the doorbell rings, Virginia will answer, but Mrs. Kiefer won't see her. Let's see. Come in, Mrs. Kiefer. The spirits are waiting for you. Not so bad. <laughs> uh, darn it, that hand's choking me again. I have to fix that. Mm. Awful uncomfortable. Oh, my gosh, she's early. Uh, go- Come in. Come in. Yeah, I must have been hearing things. Well, let's go look. I... Yeah. <laughs> 